Yay, ammo and money. Canicide protocols currently active. Please do not interrupt. Not real. You're not real. No, no, no. Just leave me alone. Just leave me alone! You're not real. You're not real. Get away from me, Phantom. Shoot! Scram! You can talk? The Phantom's never talked before. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have eaten that Sprat raw. See? See, Higgins? This is why you must always boil your Sprats before ingesting.
Clearly, I mistook you for one of the phantoms of my imagination, which terrorized me on occasion. Chester D. Higgins. The D stands for definitely not insane. I use it as a reminder. Hmm. Hard to say. By my reckoning, Higgins has been here somewhere between two weeks and forever. My recollection's a touch fuzzy these days. Oh, Higgins has been many things over the years. Sprat Wrangler, Saltuna Critic, Aetherwave Personality, Chairman of the Board, Galactic Defender, Sisty Pig Tycoon. I've come a long way for someone who started off as a simple engineer right here in this plant. I specialized in auto mechanicals, drones, sentries, repaired them, maintained, upgraded, did it all from my old workroom just over in the next section. Look, I don't want to fall into any trouble with the mechanicals. If they wise up to our plans, they will come for us with prodding irons. You know, you remind me of myself back when I was an intergalactic adventurer. I discovered a flaw. Their hostility levels were hardwired to maximum. There's no changing that, but you could rewrite their targeting protocol so they attack each other instead. Yes, that's exactly it. I see you're also versed in the noble art of mechanical engineering. There's a behavior control terminal in the other room. It should have options to change how the mechanicals act, including whom they shoot at. Oh, uh, that reminds me. You'll need my passcode to access the behavior control terminal. Here, let me just write it down for you. A plasma cutter, huh? I need that.
What the hell? Why can't I get equipped that? Any luck finding one of those manuals? No kidding. Mm. Really? Well, which one? Ain't that just ironical. If I'd worked a little longer back at the cannery, I might have found this myself. Two whole data pads? Be still my beating heart. Oh, almost forgot your payment. Don't keep me in suspense. The geothermal plant? Now that is just incredible. You really went exploring down there? Adelaide always told us it was swarming with hostile mechanicals. That's a complete set. All three parts. I'm gonna be the greatest engineer Halcyon's ever seen. Um, aside from you, Ms. Parvati, I swear. I'll do you proud. I'm glad we could help, Thomas. I've been saving something for you. Uh, just a little contraption I found. Should fit right into your outfit.
look at that. The snakes come back. I never thought I'd see the day that Reed Thompson abandoned his post. Suppose we all have a breaking point. Suppose it's time our flock made our way back to Edgewater. We must tend to what remains of the town and carry on with our lives as best we may. You're vexing to me, you know? Injuring us with one hand, helping us with the other. Here, I'm giving you something to leave us be. It's a ransom, you understand, not a reward. You're telling me you did all this just to put me in charge of Edgewater? Stranger, you are some kind of twisted. I might turn that old cannery into a garden. Got ourselves a whole cemetery bursting with bodies. I need some time to gather my personals. Long walk back to Edgewater. Got a considerable burden to carry. Dang, that's impressive!
Never seen the veil lit up like this before. Bang up, work soldier. You're a credit to your uniform. Oh, that reminds me. Gotta look into getting us a uniform. So this is it, then. The key to humanity's victory over the mechanical hordes. I would reward you with the gratitude of the resistance, but I'm guessing you want something tactile. So here's a couple of bits for your trouble, and a little something to remember me by. Mia, go to bed. Mia, go to bed. Oops. Go to bed. Ah. to my ear. Confetti machine. Cannery's been running at full capacity all day. Must be all oh, I cut my own hair. But Conrad sells real good disinfectant. What can I do for you? Go ahead.
What can I do for you? You know about Eugene? How? Then, you know Phyllis suggested selling off Eugene's gold teeth. I didn't approve of the idea then, and I don't approve of it now. Eugene's golden teeth were a family heirloom, representing three generations of poor dental hygiene. He took them to his grave. That's unthinkable. Eugene's body and all rare earth minerals contained therein are solely the property of Spacer's choice. I can't ask Silas to dig up a man's body and pry a few teeth loose from his jaw just to pay my bills. Can I? Uh, are you asking rhetorically? Because if you're being serious... Ugh, gross. Desperate measures, Miss Holcomb. Desperate measures. I'm going to have to ask Silas to dig up those teeth. It's the only way I'm paying my gravesite fees. I'm sure that I have no other choice. Here you are. Gravesite papers affixed with my signature and an IOU. Eugene was not a suicide. He put a bullet in his brain, yes, but that's largely a technicality. I was the one who prepared Eugene's body for interment. I discovered symptoms of the plague on his corpse, and I discovered medicine in his pocket. Lots of medicine. Eugene overdosed on Adrena time, which is known to cause psychosis and paranoia as possible side effects. The paranoia drove him to take his own life. It's a miracle of bureaucracy. If Eugene's death were filed as a suicide, we'd all pay the price for his crime. We can all thank our lucky stars that young Eugene was hopped up on medication and suffered its predictable side effect. I included it all in my official report. I'd like to think I saved Edgewater a great deal of money. We never could have paid the fines associated with a suicide. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, go off, Mia. Yeah. Get off. Mia, yeah. get off. Hey, Miss Parvat. Lovely to see you about, Miss Parvati. Things going all right, Silas? <sighs> Been keeping him careful and true, Miss. <sighs> Best to ask her yourself. My dad's buried here. Silas watches over him when I get... when I can't leave the house. Oh. Well, thanks. Something I can do for you? You run into any trouble? Reliable work from a freelancer. That's gonna take some getting used to. And I'll buy you a drink sometime. Uh, suppose you've earned it. One good turn deserves another. Abernathy was sick? With the plague? That's disgusting. I shook hands with the guy. What? No. If I knew he was sick, I would have had him reported. I needed his fees because of his name. A for Abernathy. He was at the top of my list, you see? Yeah?
Is this your ship? Oh, my star, she is just so handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship, working on a real engine, belonging to a proper crew. I'm the only decent mechanic Edgewater's got, but every time I think of going back, I get this sinking feeling. Well, it's kind of you to say that. And you're right. I wasn't happy. I want to ask you something, and you can say no. But... Can I come with you? I could tend to your engine. I know my G-valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Edgewater was on the verge of collapse before you showed up. You sent them power, and now the town might see another season. And you talked Miss McDevitt into coming back to town. Maybe one day, Edgewater will have a garden where that cannery once stood. You ain't exactly a stranger anymore. You've done some kindness hereabouts. I wouldn't mind following somebody like that. I mean, thanks. You won't regret this, mister. Captain. I already do. I can call you Captain now. <laughs> oh. I got a Captain. Well, I certainly am looking forward to flying on a ship named the Unreliable. I'll just head upstairs and claim a room. Shield. Shield. Captain, I have detected that Edgewater's power supply is now optimal. I applaud your willingness to invest your time in the local community. What can I do? All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities.
received a communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Aha, there you are. Hale and hearty. I see you're putting the unreliable... Former Captain Horrible, wait, by the way. I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the ground breaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Without a skip drive, good luck. You'll be dead before you make it to the nearest star. Look, I admire your optimism, but the sad truth is you're stuck here. You, me, and the rest of this colony. We're all skating precariously around the edge of oblivion together. None of us are leaving Halcyon alive, so we may as well make it a better place. And we can start by reviving the hope. Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraformed badly, and almost completely lawless. You'll love it. Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys Kelly. In theory, I suppose you could land your ship in Cascadia, and in theory, I suppose you might survive the experience. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. You'd have to be a lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. Trust me, talk to Gladys Cult Kelly. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design, cutting-edge technology, years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. Yeah, so this is my hiding spot now. I was looking for a place that was quiet. I figured the kitchen would be louder than the hold, so here I am. Cozy like, ain't it?
Mostly, yeah. I lived in the maintenance office near all my life. Mr. Thompson never let me forget how funny that was. I'm not exactly a model employee. Not like you wanted. The kind that stays quiet and gets the right work done in the right order every day. It's not normal for anyone to do as their parents. You take a vocational test. That decides your schooling and your career. When I tested out for maintenance, everyone figured it was on account of my dad. They were real unhappy with us. Well, I'm good at making things work the way they ought. Not so much at doing such to somebody else's schedule. There's times I'm working deep in the guts of a loader, getting it all running perfect. Then I look up to see it's tomorrow, and I've blown another deadline. Anyhow, I, I was happy to get back home. I didn't care much for schooling. Yep, nothing much had changed. Everything was a little grayer, a little dirtier. Dad met me at the shuttle and gave me a big old hug. I noticed straight away that he was moving slower and stiffer. He made a little grunt when I squeezed. About a year. I tried to do more of the work so he could rest. His heart gave him pains. Dad never said that he loved me, you know? I, I knew on account of him showing it. How he'd stay up late to help with my projects, or listen to my fretting. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Look at the time. Sorry to bend your ear so long. And I got so much to do before this ship's in decent shape. That's in pretty good shape, considering how hard Mr. Hawthorne ran it. It's a Yakita LHA-120. A2 model, I'm pretty sure. The Block 2 design scooshed in extra cargo space, but didn't change the stock engines. Probably a touch underpowered, huh? Accurate in all particulars. I conclude you are Edgewater's board-certified mechanic. So you're gonna call her it, not she? Though my voice is currently pitched to suggest female, I possess no gender. Any pronoun preferred by the user is acceptable. Hello. I am not a board-certified mechanic, but my dad was. He taught me all he knew. Do you understand? Speech recognition is one of the many skills I have been programmed to simulate. You're not simulating it. You're doing it. I asked a question and you answered it. I am gratified you consider this facsimile convincing. I am at your disposal, Ms. Parvati. You will find the technical schematics in the engineer's locker, though I'm afraid Captain Hawthorne has lost the owner's manual. I don't see any holes in the hull. I'll take a good squint at her, make sure everything's tip-top. But I think we're cooking with plasma torches. You can do that, you know. My dad taught me how to make grilled cheese sandwiches with a plasma torch. What? Oh. The ship used to be much quieter. Want to be a brand new you? Try out our respecification machine. Alex installed it himself. Right before he died.
Captain Hawthorne used to be more dashing. Make yourself at home, Captain. The repair station is currently idle. Mission reached the groundbreaker. Can we talk? Hey, Captain. I heard that Groundbreaker's got a real good engineer. A lady named June Lay Tennyson. I was thinking that maybe I ought to meet her. If you got time to swing us by, I mean. 
I don't got much experience fixing actual spaceships. I bet you can in Borston Beans, she could teach me all manner of stuff. Thanks, Captain. I'll be sure to make it worth your time. Did you want to talk about something else? and awake. Not to worry. I take our ship's security highly seriously. Yeah. Smells like grease and unwashed bodies, just as I remembered. That's not the point. This hack would just knock out one of my workers. Yeah, with a toss ball stick, I heard you the first time. There weren't any witnesses. No witnesses. Customs and inspection, right this way!
Captain Hawthorne, you said. Let me apologize in advance. I'm about to ruin your day. According to your ship's record, you've been flagged by the board. Your ship will be impounded until such a time as they see fit to lift it. But we've hardly been out of Edgewater long enough to get in trouble. Well, isn't this wonderful? The captain's done something to get on the board's bad side. Now, hold on. This isn't the end of the world. Probably. You'll want to take it up with Udom Bedford, our board representative here on Groundbreaker. His office is located along the starboard wall of the promenade. Shines like a Byzantium commode. You can't miss it. Access to that information is above my pay grade, and I've turned down three promotions, so it stays that way. I shouldn't be mentioning it, but what the hell? This here, impounding your ship, it doesn't happen much. The board knows we don't take kindly to their interfering in our operations. If I had to take a guess as to why, you must have riled up someone important. You take the starch out of them, well, you won't hear any complaints from me. Oh, and if you're headed that way, would you mind doing me a favor? Wanda Dorset over in sickbay? Tell her the shipment's not in yet. It's not coming in anytime soon, and if she'd be so obliged to get off my ass about it. Much appreciated. Is there anything else I can help you with? The fence. You'll find her in the rest and go. On your left when you enter the promenade. Make sure you bring an empty belly. Maybe. Most of the shipping traffic in the system passes through Groundbreaker. Every couple of months, we even get a big interstellar freighter. Two biggest operations are the board, that is, Halcyon Holdings and Sublight Salvage. But there are independent operators around the promenade deck. Most of those jobs are going to take you off station, though. All right. Be seeing you. I picked up this weird signal the other day. It was coming from Monarch. Here we go again. No one lives on Monarch. It's a wasteland. You were hearing things. No, seriously. There was a lot of static at first, but then this voice said his name was Graham? Graham, right. Broadcasting on a dead world full of monsters. Now I've heard everything. You know, it takes more muscles to frown than to smile. Can we talk? What do you think you're doing? Oh, my mistake.
Try not to be distracted by the glare of the adverts. Lots of unsavory types about. Go back to Byzantium, you gold-plated bastard. Have you seen this man? For your no. offers for information leading to the capture of your intelligence in the Report any sightings to your local board embassy. And an old Yakita 37? You think they'd let me peek at the Valkyrie? Thought there'd be more machinery. Must be housed on a sublevel. I could spend all day in here and not have looked at half the best stuff. It's all pretty worn, though. Rocks the league and thrown it. Junlei Tennyson. I'm captain around here, but chief to my friends. Hope you don't mind the formal introduction. Groundbreaker doesn't see many visitors. I heard we had someone in impound. Wish I could help. I gave the bureaucrats a mode of authority over freight traffic, and it rankles them good when I challenge it. Just so we understand each other, I'm the final word on the ship. The Mardits, the crew, the engineers, their family. I hope there won't be any problems while you're visiting. Good. Don't go making trouble, and chances are you won't find any. That's how I like it here. So what brings you to Groundbreaker? I'm curious, even though nine times out of ten, the answer is just passing through. Interesting. The powers that be paint an ugly picture of Monarch. Critters and such. Maybe someone in the promenade can get you the right weapon for the job. We see a lot of the same faces coming and going. Most of them board spies and corporate sprats. Makes it hard to trust outsiders. You seem different, so welcome aboard. What? I didn't think you just... Parvati, is it? That's a lovely name. What can I do for you? I was just thinking. I haven't got much experience working with actual, real spaceships, Miss Junlei. Uh, uh, Chief Junlei. Junlei is fine. Um, okay. Since you run a whole space station, I was wondering if... Well, maybe you could teach me some things. I could message you later, maybe? I'd be happy to make the time, Parvati. You can ask me anything. Right! In person. Sh sure thing, Captain. Wow, great! I'll do that then. Messages. Later. Oh, your your name's pretty too. I should have said sorry. I like it. Honest. Sorry. Couldn't have done it without your moral support, Captain. Now, if there's nothing else, there are other parts of News. We interrupt your regularly scheduled advertising.
What the hell's going on? We were in a holding pattern for two hours just to get in. You mind stepping back? This charming little ship's been impounded and I'm afraid I can't let you near it till it's not. I'd surely love to, but that's just not my big. Gosh, I wouldn't dream of it. Not unless I got to, and I don't see any reason why I'd gotta. Do you? She's a good ship, ma'am. Mostly doesn't act up at all. Happy to hear it. I ain't felt so much as a tepid breeze in weeks. I hope Miss Chief Tennyson gets that fix soon. Well, it doesn't smell as bad here as Edgewater's graveyard in high summer, so guess I can't complain. Either way, let's not stick around so long. We all roast alive. No offense, Miss Elson. I'm sure whatever critical problem needs fixing will get patched in time. Whew. I'm starting to feel like a sisty roast in all this armor. Have yourself a pleasant day. Captain, I was hoping for a word. Captain, if I could trouble you for a moment of your time, while we're on the Groundbreaker, I may have an idea for how we could find a translator. I've been thinking on that. There's a former associate. Uh, infamous philosopher scholar who fled Terra 2 some years ago. He's an expert on Bakonu. He's also who told me of the journal's presence in Emerald Vale. If anyone in this colony could translate that book, it would be him. That's a good question. Fortunately, we're in the perfect place to start. This is where I'd go if I wanted to get off Terra 2. Great place to pick up a ride to Hephaestus, Scylla, even Monarch. All I need is access to a data cartridge from the security terminal. Their easily hackable system keeps a registry of all crew manifests for both arrivals and departures. I'll comb the last six months of departure manifests to track the Philosophist's off-world destination. Thank you, Captain. I'm not going anywhere, you hear? You can't keep me out of there. Please don't make a scene, Dr. Fenhill.
Can't say I've seen you before. I take it you're a freighter, Captain? If you're here to better yourself, you'll have to wait. We're having a spot of trouble with our delivery service. He must be referring to Erion. I'm sure the fool's gotten himself into another scrape. I'm beginning to wonder if I'm ever going to get my service mechanicals at this rate. I'd be grateful if you'd spare the time. We need his delivery soon as yesterday. Last he told me, he was taking a shortcut by Scylla, an asteroid in the Charybdis Cluster. That's where I'd start, were I the adventuring type. You look out, though. The place is probably crawling with outlaws. Upstairs room? We need to wrap your regular room. Bless my heart. A stranger come knocking on a poor old woman's door. You here for a particular reason? Or did the neighbors tell you how good my sugar cookies are? Made without a single natural ingredient or an oven. Just like store bought. I've got a lovely little throw pillow. Just something I toss together. Like to keep my hands busy. Holy shit. Six. Yeah. Gracious, I was just sitting down for tea. Those have been the height of illegality since Stellar Bay turned their noses up at the board. You and I could be thrown to the void just for discussing such a transaction. Lucky for us, Groundbreaker's a free port. We're outside of the board's control. For the time being, at least. Now, I only have the one nav key. And they're hard to come by these days. It won't be cheap. If you find yourself lacking in the bits, I might have an opportunity you'd be interested in. Ten thousand what? Well, I find I'm in need of a ship captain with a little... moral flexibility. Might be this could help out the Groundbreaker, as well as earn some bits. But if you've got qualms... Do you know Edna, over in engineering? Sweet as a pea, that one. On occasion, she'll pass along transmissions I might find interesting. She sent me a recording of a distress signal she'd scraped from the Groundbreaker's comm array. Curious thing is, it came from an outpost called Roseway. And Auntie Cleo abandoned that place years ago. Can't say I know for sure. Maybe it never really was. Sounds like someone poking into somewhere they shouldn't be got into a spot of trouble. Comm centers don't operate themselves, Captain. Someone had to have sent that distress call manually. Those corps are cleverer than all get out. Might have been a ruse to keep the rest of the board from sniffing around. Edna didn't seem to think so, and I trust the dear girl's judgment. Well, maybe not in men, but she knows her comms. So, like as not, someone's been down there recently. And if someone set up shop in Roseway, 
I'd wager they got something to hide. Maybe whatever they're hiding went to heck, and now they need a few spare hands to clean up the mess. If you should find a secret worth selling, might be I could find a buyer. Corporate bigwigs will pay top bit for inside information on their competitors. The more we got the corpse fighting each other, the less time they got to meddle in our affairs. My goodness, aren't you quick on the uptake? I like that. Should you find yourself responding to a certain distress call, and in so doing find yourself in possession of certain valuable corporate secrets, well... Then we ought to have a chat over a pot of tea and my famous cookies. Law bless your atoms. Here's a copy of the SOS recording, complete with the coordinates. Don't forget to come find old Gladys when you're done. Might want to acquaint yourself with Junlei Tennyson, Groundbreaker's chief. She's been trying to get a handle on this heat problem we've got. You'll find her fretting in engineering. I'd say she's a sweet girl, but law for fen someone call me a liar. I don't know, ma'am. She seemed pretty neat to me. Well, aren't you sweet? And just her type, too. What? What's that supposed to mean? Forget I said anything. Any time, sweet. advertisement for the following story. Remember Auntie Cleo? Because she remembers you. When you were sick, who took your temperature? When you were... Ah, the board. Organized, efficient, competent. Well, mostly. Ah, yes. Wheeler messaged me you were coming. He must be the captain of the Unreliable, a vessel that used to be helmed by one Alex Hawthorne. And you are not he. Has something happened to my favorite scruffy freelancer? This is terrible. My dear friend, what devilry is this? In whose miserable fever dream am I trapped? Oh, Alex. There were so many arguments we'd yet to have. He was my dearest friend. My only friend. You have his ship, you must know. That picture of us on the promenade, me hugging him, him wincing. I keep a copy beside my bed. Did he? Ah, oh, that's just like him. Such a sentimental man. Tell me, how did he die? No! How dreadful. 
That was always Alex's greatest fear, you know. Devoured by those fiends. Becoming one with their... Their droppings. Right. Right. You are going important places, I'm sure. Big, exciting, important places. <laughs> there. I've removed the flag from your ship. I'm terribly sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, however, before you go... Alex promised to tell me the location of Phineas Wells. I'm sure you've seen his wanted posters all over the colony. Did Alex tell you where Wells might be? Anything at all? You haven't read the posters? He's a terrorist, a thief, a madman. It's really in the colony's best interest that we stop him before he does further harm. That's... Uh, well, that's just terrible news. Law, oh, what am I going to do now? The board will have my head. Oh, I'm sorry. This is terribly unprofessional of me. Is there anything else I might help you with? It's personal business, I'm afraid. Uh, miserably, terribly personal. Information on the whereabouts of Phineas Wells would go a long way. It's... well, it's my white whale, I suppose. What? Indeed. And you know where he is? Excelsior! An apprehension of this caliber will be tremendous for my career. Just a teensy one, the teensiest. Nothing to, uh, lie awake worrying about for nights on end or anything. <laughs> the thing is, I needed money. A lot of money, quickly, for reasons. I might have... pawned my official board seal to Gladys, the black market fencier on the Groundbreaker. I can't authorize the paperwork you'll need to turn Phineas in without it. Stray too much from the, uh, straight and narrow, and one may just find himself assigned pastoral duty in a maximum security penitentiary. To give away something so important to you, there must have been some curious reasons. I'll thank you not to question my motives, young miss. It was a mistake, and I'd like to put it behind me. It's only temporary, of course. I'd never leave something so important in the hands of someone of such a dubious moral character. I was going to buy it back once I raised the capital. So you'll need to get my seal back from her if you want to hand Phineas over to the board. Though, it might surprise you. Oh, gosh. That's quite a goof, sir. If you don't mind me saying. I'm very well aware. Now, let's get back to business, hmm? The ship's groaning something fierce, but I can make time for you. Groundbreaker's radiators need replacement parts. They're dumping superheated air into my ship. Only the board has access to new parts, and I won't let them swindle me into a corner. None. Every time I give in to the board, Groundbreaker loses its freedom. Soon there won't be anything left. I can't allow that. The board isn't helping, and my resources are spread thin. If I don't get those radiators back online, Groundbreaker, everyone on board, will be cooked alive. Reasonable, huh? That's the best news I've heard all day. According to my grandmother's old schematics, the parts we need should be in the back bays. Hold on. There's something you should know before you go charging off. 
The back bays are on a lower deck, long abandoned and a haven for miscreants now. You must not have been here long. In Halcyon, new parts come by way of interstellar freighters from Earth, and the board monopolizes that kind of trade. That means I'd have to negotiate with the board. I've already given them the shops, the docking fees, and a damn embassy. Damn right. And while I'm captain of the Groundbreaker, it falls to me to preserve this ship's independence. Good. Once you've obtained the parts, we can proceed to the next phase of repairs. Red, were you expecting any company? A neighbor from above approaches our realm. Back away now, or you'll... Look at this ripe piece of meat just sizzling on the grill. <laughs> yum, yum. Time to feed the flames. <sighs> it's nothing personal. Promise. Is this what carbon <sighs> monoxide poisoning looks like? I don't think this deck is too well ventilated. Uh, speaking for myself, Captain, I am not of a mind to be murdered by a psychopath who plays with fire. You came with the crew. Welcome. We got plenty of space to spread out, but only room for one captain. Incoming! Damn, son of a bitch. Well, 
behind the grid. Are you expecting any company? A neighbor from above approaches our realm. Back to the I should have brought the grenade launcher. McRed, were you expecting any company? A neighbor from above approaches our realm. Back away now, or you'll parley with the king.
Even the proverbial un- Here we go! I guess I'm honored. Here they come.
fantastic we've got them. Now we can move on to cleaner pastures. Interrupt your regularly scheduled advertisement for the following story. Toss Pro Finals are scheduled to air soon, but... What the hell?
teams have tested negative for performance enhancing skin. A toss ball first. You've re Good work. I'll take those. I need you to head through the large door at the far end of engineering. Take the elevator down into the machinery shaft. There's a terminal in the back. Activate it when I call over the ship's PA. And bring weapons. There's a slight manticular infestation. Don't worry, Miss Junlei. We'll be super gentle with the ship. You don't got a thing to worry about. I mean, aside from fires and such. I'm genuinely heartened to hear that. Thank you. Yeah, huh? Well, I didn't expect her to be so tall. And did you see the size of her arms? Gosh, did she ever. Did you see how everybody on Groundbreaker listens to Junlei? She's just, here's how to fix it. And they trust her. It's just, she's calm and knows what to do. I wish I was half so confident. The controls are in the back of the machinery shaft area. Keep clear of the radiator.
tells me the security mechanicals booted up and killed a bunch of men. Bad news. Diagnostic says their circuit boards are fused from the heat, so they're not too picky about who they kill next. Incoming! Expected. Watch out, Captain. Investigating. Amy. Security right. Nice hit.
Coffee on Noon. We interrupt your regularly scheduled advertisement for the following story. My boards are returning to green. What a weight that is off my shoulders. I don't normally tolerate outsiders mucking about in my station's guts, but you're all right. The temperature should be dropping as we speak. I'll see to it the crew knows who kept us all from boiling alive. If you've got time, I believe Edna has a comms issue that could use your attention. I've also authorized Doc and Furu to sell you our premium meds. And be worst worst. It's not the worst unless it's worst worst. Is it just me or is Groundbreaker feeling extra chilly? Maybe you ought to help yourself to a piping hot frozen dinner. Oh, and it's not the best choice. It's Spacer's choice. Taste the free. A lot of slogan. Uh, have a look. If you're here for this week's magazine club meeting, you're a touch late. Depends. What are you planning to do with it? See the lights. 
taking a show or two at the infamous Bijou. Could be a treat if you like that kind of thing. All right, I'll sell it to you. But it's gonna cost you dear. Anything else, dear? Ouch. Any time. Who wants to play an impromptu tossball match? No one? Really? As always, I am at your disposal. Anything you'd like to discuss? This is it. Security. I can check the departures registry to find out which crew chip I mean, the scholar shipped in and out with. Nicely done. Work. There it is. Just yank the drive and I'll do the rest. Now that we have the data cartridge, I can finally find out where that scholar I'm looking for ended up. Got it. His name is Reginald Cheney, and he joined a sublight salvage crew. Only he's not listed on the return manifest. Must have made landfall somewhere he wasn't supposed to. Ah, uh, yes. Here. There's a domicile on Monarch in Fallbrook, rented to the same bitcart he used to buy his seat on the salvage ship. I should have guessed. What better place to lay low if you wish to avoid the authorities? Oh, it's nothing. I admit it was a bit of a lot. Oh, it's nothing.
Hey, mm. that pad down there, with the lights off, there are people on the... Step lively, Ms. Holcomb. I I'm not winded. Honest. My, uh, boot was untied. Would hate for you to get left behind, or architect forbid, become lost. Hey, you got a second? Hey, we don't know each other yet, but I'm Felix Millstone. I was in the middle of a little discussion with the local authorities when you passed me by. I noticed your ship in port. Got to thinking you might be looking for some crew. So, I wandered by, just to take a closer look. Gotta hand it to you, boss. That's a fine-looking ship. Only thing it's missing is me. Yes, I absolutely am. Just give me a shot. That's all I'm asking. I could be the best damn crew you ever hired. You're serious. You're giving me a shot. All right. Uh, hang on, hang on. I put together a little speech, just in case you asked. Hey there, I'm Felix Millstone. I have prepared a list of reasons why I believe you should hire me to join the crew of your ship and or outlaw gang. Firstly, I am highly personable, and I get along well with anyone who is not of the jackass persuasion. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. He's funny. Uh, secondly, I can be counted on in the event of a firefight, standoff, and or raid. My motto is, if you need a steady gun hand, I'm your man. That motto is a, it's a work in progress. Additionally, I have several years of experience as a box hauler. This skill may come in handy if you need a body dragged away or a door held open while escaping enemy fire. In conclusion, thank you for considering me for your ship crew and or outlaw gang. I look forward to our adventures together. I thought that was real good, Felix. Thanks for the vote of confidence. What do you think? Am I in? <laughs> wow. <laughs> you don't know how long I've been waiting to hear that. Thanks, boss. I'll just gather my personals and meet you on board. This is gonna be great. You got a crew now, Felix. Welcome back. Do wipe the blood and space dust from your feet in the entry bay. Thank you. Hey, Captain. Can I get your temperature on something real quick? So, June Lei and I have been talking some. Through messages? I got him here on my data pad, and well, she sent me a poem. When she wrote her own self, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if I should read into it. Because poems are all symbolic and such, right? It's not so good. But real sweet. Oh, law. That's what's got me spooked. I don't rightly know. It's about this engine that's been shaking itself apart. Then this lady mechanic comes by and... I don't want 
want to get too hopeful, but I'm wondering if maybe she's the engine and I'm the lady? I don't know where it's leading yet, or if I'm misinterpreting. I'm not much interested in physical stuff. Never have been. Leastways, not like other folks seem to be. It's not that I can't, I just don't. It's been a problem in the past. The folk who wanted to be with me back in the Vale, they didn't. They said I was cold. Thanks, Captain. I actually had another message from Junlei. I just couldn't work up the courage to open it. Let's see here. Talking about old friends, got to thinking. They were close, Captain. Like, more th I don't know. Junlei talked about them like it was past, but how far in the past? Ten years? Captain, I'm feeling all mixed up right now. Could we... Maybe head to the Groundbreaker, get some drinks at that bar there, Lost Hope. Come on, Captain, this is no time to be fooling on me. I'm full serious. Next time we're on the Groundbreaker, I aim to get a drink. If I got to, I'll do it on my lonesome. But I'd feel better if someone I trusted was there. <laughs> 